infusion. Well, what could be wrong with a service that provides very sick people with intravenous medication at home rather than in the hospital? Well, how about patients receiving unnecessary treatments or questionable relationships between the provider and the doctors and abusive prices? As Catherine Pryor reports, misfortune in one person's life can sometimes bring fortune to another. You're a million dollar baby, aren't you, Sarah? Sarah Weber was born with cerebral palsy. When she was four years old, her digestive system broke down. From then on, she had to get all her food and massive doses of medicine intravenously. Is this going to make you feel better? Mm. I know it will. Today, Sarah will get phenobarbs every eight hours. She'll get ceftazox every eight hours, ampicillin every six hours, azactam every eight hours, and she'll also get morphine and Valium and Zofran as she needs them. For six months, Sarah lay in a hospital bed, hooked up to the IV. Her mother, Marie, constantly at her side. It was so hard with her in the hospital because I have six other children at home, and I felt like a rubber band between the hospital and home. I was needed both places, but couldn't be both places at once. Have a good day. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Then Sarah was able to go home thanks to a new kind of health care. It's called home infusion. It's a $4 billion a year industry, and it's growing fast. Patients like Sarah get intravenous treatments in the comfort of their homes instead of in the hospital. Home infusion companies provide everything a patient needs, from drugs to pumps, plastic tubing, intravenous needles, even bandages and gauze. Now, you think it would cost a lot less than a high-priced hospital stay. But a 2020 investigation has found that many home infusion companies mark up the prices of drugs and supplies by huge amounts, sometimes more than 3,000 percent. And many companies pay doctors for referring patients for IV treatment, even in some cases when the patient may not need it. And it's all charged off to our insurance. Now, the money is so good that some doctors are going into the home infusion business themselves. She could pay good money. It didn't take long for the Weber family to learn about pricing in the home infusion industry. Marie Costas Weber assumed Sarah's treatment at home would be much cheaper than in the hospital. That is, until the day the home infusion company told Marie her daughter's insurance was about to run out. No. I thought, how could it be almost run out? And then I started asking them for bills. How long did it take, it take you to get bills from the company once you began to ask? Over a year. What was their excuse? They don't send them to patients. They only send them to the insurance companies. Finally, when I was adamant and demanded them, they started sending me bills. And I couldn't believe what I saw. What she saw were enormous bills from one of the biggest home infusion companies, Critical Care America, some approaching $100,000 a month. Marie compared the critical care bills to Sarah's hospital bills. And how much more a day does it cost? Almost $1,000 a day. More, more to keep Sarah at home and take care of her myself than it would be for her to stay in the hospital and have nursing 24 hours a day around the clock. I have to mix it. How could that be? Marie showed us Sarah's supply of drugs. And then, this is ampicillin. Sarah gets four of these a day. It's a powder that I mix. Ampicillin is a commonly prescribed antibiotic. Critical care charges $122.81 a dose. For Sarah, nearly $500 a day. That just about pays for your bed. The hospital only charges you $10 a dose for the same thing. So what might cost you $40 in the hospital is costing you $500 to give it to her yourself that's at right. home. You've got it. That's the way it is. And that's outrageous, isn't it? The critical care could buy that for somewhere around $3.50 per unit, and they're selling it to her for $122.81. That's a markup of more than 3,000%. Dr. Dwayne Hull makes a business out of analyzing medical costs for self-insured health plans. He says critical care and other IV companies' prices are way too high. It's ludicrous. I don't care who tries to rationalize it. One way Critical Care America tries to rationalize their prices is by pointing to their overhead which they showed us. Hi, good afternoon. Nurses and pharmacists monitoring patients receiving treatment, a clean room for preparing drugs, 
storage facilities and delivery staff. If they give a price for the services that they're rendering, including the materials and the pharmaceuticals, they should be able to make a nice profit and pay all their costs for about a 75 to 80 percent market. But our investigation has found that pricing isn't the only problem. There are home infusion companies out there drawing in customers by convincing them they need treatment for diseases they may not even have, like Lyme disease. It can start with a simple radio ad. If you have recurring symptoms such as joint or muscle pain, chronic fatigue, upset stomach, severe headache, you may have Lyme disease. Call 1-800-TICK-BITE to reach the Lyme Care Center. To it get sounds like an ad for an information hotline. I'm very angry. And on the local news, the man who runs that hotline, Ray Hernandez, is portrayed as a Lyme disease victim out to help others. But what seems like a public information hotline is also a marketing ploy by this home infusion company, HomeEd, owned by Ray Hernandez's family. Lyme disease is the perfect disease for HomeEd. It's got a lot of vague symptoms, it's hard to diagnose, and it's often treated at home with intravenous antibiotics. The understanding was that practically everything could be Lyme. This woman has worked for HomeEd's hotline. And I have heard people at the Lyme care center literally diagnosing people over the phone. She says HomeEd's operators use this checklist of symptoms to convince callers they have Lyme disease and need IV treatment. Then send callers to doctors like Vital Shaw, who would prescribe home infusion provided by HomeEd. He was on HomeEd's payroll, and he's been accused by the state of New Jersey of putting patient after patient on IV antibiotics, even though they didn't need the treatment. That's what Cheryl Demick says happened when HomeEd sent her to Dr. Shaw after she called 1-800-TICK-BITE. Before I even had the test, he told me I had Lyme disease. Did Dr. Shaw ever discuss any relationship he might have with the home infusion company? No, they said that they just do a lot of business with them and that he refers a lot of clients to them. But in fact, when patients had the IV hookup implanted, HomeEd paid Dr. Shaw $350 and continued paying him $175 a week for every week the patient stayed hooked up. Last year, HomeEd paid Dr. Shaw more than $31,000. He made thousands more from deals with at least four other home infusion companies. Before long, Dr. Shaw put Cheryl's husband, Scott, and her father on the IV, too, telling them they had Lyme disease, even though other doctors later said they never had it and the bills mounted. The <clears throat> IV drugs alone right here cost $3,381. HomeEd charged as much as $7,700 a week for Cheryl's treatment, which lasted four months. Did you ever feel better? During this treatment, I never felt better a day. I kept feeling worse and worse. Dr. Shaw and HomeEd say they did nothing wrong, but Cheryl and her husband are suing. Dr. Shaw was just one in a stable of doctors working with HomeEd. Howard Zorfus is another. Hello, Dr. Zorfus. He's a podiatrist, a foot doctor, not an MD. Podiatrists aren't supposed to treat diseases that affect the whole body, like Lyme disease, let alone prescribe IV treatment for them. So how did Dr. Zorfus get involved? One of my patients is the president of HomeEd. Uh, he happened to come in my office uh, and just say that uh, we're treating a lot of Lyme disease patients. I said, well, I know a fair amount about it, but and so I learned a lot from him, and I learned a lot from the doctors that he's dealt with. So most of your training did come from, from home ed? Correct, correct. The people who run home ed didn't want to talk to us, but at a Lyme disease rally in Trenton, New Jersey, we caught up with Ray Hernandez. You know, some people have, have said that the Lyme Care Center is basically the sales department for home ed. That's garbage. Hernandez says HomeEd never paid Dr. Zorfus and no longer pays other doctors for referrals. Meanwhile, several former employees say that HomeEd is a virtual boiler room where even hotline operators can get a piece of the action. On a month-to-month -month basis, they would get caught a commission check for how many cases they generated for the company. Does that concern you at all that someone answering your Lyme Care Center phone would get paid a commission? It, it doesn't concern me what anybody else's salary is or, or what mine is. It's none of your business. None of your business. We heard that answer more than once during our investigation into a disturbing trend. Doctors that go into the home infusion business themselves
instead to make more from the drugs and therapy they prescribe than the medical services they provide. We found one such doctor in Key West, Florida, poised to make millions. His name is Larry Siegel. He treats AIDS patients at this clinic. Up until two years ago, he sent them to a local home infusion company. Then Siegel became partners with a big home infusion company. There was a lot more money to be made providing the services through his clinic. They formed Immune Care of Key West. I feel taken advantage of. It's as clear as I, I've been taken advantage of. John Kreider was an immune care patient and says he didn't know Siegel was partners with a big company and making extra money off his IV treatment. Then Kreider found out he could get his drugs and supplies for a much lower price from another company. I told Dr. Siegel that uh, in the future I uh, preferred to have my uh, medical care delivered by my doctor and my pharmaceuticals delivered by my pharmacist. I just can't comment on it right now. Dr. Siegel turned down our repeated requests for an interview, in this case, through a companion. Real, real inconvenient time. Siegel contacted 2020, saying he would appear on our program only live and unedited. These doctors who participate in this are beginning to treat patients like pork bellies. They're a commodity. Our committee... Congressman Pete Stark, chairman of a powerful health subcommittee, says Dr. Siegel's arrangement may be legal, but he wants to make it illegal. My hope is that these few scoundrels in the medical profession will be drummed out. This is um, an area that has grown very rapidly. Are there problems in it? Absolutely. Do the problems outweigh the benefits of the therapies and of this industry? Absolutely not. Alan Parber is a lobbyist for the home infusion industry. He says the industry wants to get rid of Dr. Deals but admits it will take congressional action. And as for allegations of price gouging, Harbor insists insurers are negotiating lower prices with Critical Care America and other IV companies. What is being paid for um, these therapies has come down, for sure. And the prices are coming down. Well, they're still charging you $360 for something that they can buy for $5. Negotiations are wrong about pricing. We should go to what's reasonable and what constitutes a reasonable profit. When Sarah Weber's insurance coverage ran out, her mother had to quit her job so she could qualify for Medicaid. Now she's suing Critical Care America. In August, Sarah Weber died. Let us pray for Sarah, her family and friends. It had been a long struggle for Marie Costas Weber and her family. Sarah had spent half her young life on infusion therapy. It would be a wonderful legacy for Sarah to leave, to know that no one else will be taken advantage of, have to impoverish themselves because their insurance was wasted on paying exorbitant prices. Grant mercy to the entire family in this time of trouble. I think it would be wonderful if she could leave a legacy that nobody else would have to go through what her family did. Catherine, who is monitoring or regulating home infusion now, if anyone? Well, here only right now, nine states regulate directly, but the federal government, including the FBI health fraud team, is investigating on a major scale. In fact, one federal investigator said the indications of abuse and fraud, illegal activity, are enormous. Now, there are decent companies doing this. How do you know if you need this, that you're getting a, a good deal? Certainly there are good companies, but what a patient needs to do is talk to his or her doctor, make sure there's no relationship, or at least they're aware of one with a home infusion company, because they can go someplace else. And most importantly, check their own medical bills. Thank you, Catherine. Mm -hmm. Well, next, the government document that's printed in the middle of the night. You never know when your name might be in it. John Stoss will take some heat for asking too many questions about the congressional record. After this. Have you smelled Clorox bleach lately? Smells like a lemon fresh from the tree. Fresh, fresh lemon, fresh. Smells like a clean, fresh lemon breeze. Fresh, fresh lemon, fresh. Lemon fresh Clorox bleach. Skill flexi-charged cordless tools all share the same battery pack. 
so when you need a recharge, they keep on working. The FlexiCharge Interchangeable Power System. From Skill. Of all the credit cards out all the credit cards out there, only one has smart rate. Now as low as 14.9% and no annual fee. Discover card. It's a better deal. It pays to discover. This holiday season, while you're shopping, we'll be dropping $5 million in the Discover Card Big Payback. Now, every time you use your card, you're automatically entered in our $5 million sweepstake. It pays to discover the card with the big payback. Like the Lexus LS400, the Nissan Altima has specially tuned shock absorbers and front and rear subframes that give it an exceptionally smooth ride. But the Altima costs less than half the money, which means you'll also have the added cushioning of a very thick wallet. Lease a specially equipped Altima GXE for just $7.50 down and $2.29 a month for 36 months. Your hometown friends who show they care will all be there. Let's share our hometown holiday. There's no place like Walmart for the holidays where the prices really help and the people do too. Because no matter how busy things get, we'll always take time for our hometown friends. Share our hometown holiday. It's holiday time at Walmart. Monday, this Christian doctor claims he's doing God's work, but these women say the way he practices medicine is a sin. You had a complete hysterectomy for no good reason. Is he using his religion to hide his dangerous practice? Day One investigates Monday after football. You won't believe what they're talking about in Congress. Soap opera stars, cookie sales, maybe even you. It's all here. It's official. Is that how they're spending our money? John Stossel talks turkey about your tax dollars at work when 2020 continues after this from our ABC stations. Swanson Roth asks, which do you think tastes better? Rice cooked in water or rice cooked with Swanson Broth? Swanson Broth, it simply makes food taste better. How can your Bymart membership card bring holiday cheer? By saving you money on gifts like the Daisy Shets Pot. It's a six-quart cooker, fryer, steamer, all-in-one, now just $19.99. Or get a rival automatic rice cooker and steamer for just $24.88. And a 1.2 cubic foot sharp carousel 2 microwave oven is now $149.88 with mail-in rebate. Prices are good through this Sunday only at Bymart, where it's easy to beat the high cost of living during the holidays and every day. Behold, a legendary holiday feast for four. A plump, juicy Colonel's rotisserie gold chicken and ten tantalizing side dishes to choose from, like garden rice with tender vegetables and macaroni with cheddar cheese. Get your two favorite large side dishes, four cornbread muffins or biscuits, and a whole Colonel's rotisserie gold chicken. Just $10.99. A special holiday offer only at KFC. 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 Happy holidays from KFC. Good evening. I'm Kevin Schaum. Pilots are defending a model of commuter jet used throughout the Northwest. The Jetstream 31 was the model of the plane that crashed in northern Minnesota this week. It was a Jetstream 31 that crashed in Pasco four years ago. Investigators say the plane may be responsible for both crashes. The story tonight on Northwest Nightcast. And tonight we'll show you the blowing up of an old building on the Hanford Reservation and the Prosser Mustangs headed to the King Bowl. We'll see you at 11. You're watching CAP TV, Channel 35, Yakima. C News 2020 continues. Once again, Hugh Downs. Here at 2020, as you know, we're always looking out for your money. And what better place to find people wasting it than in Washington, which is where our resident skeptic, John Stossel, has just uncovered an amazing example of how your money is spent. Now, you'd think that an official document that we pay millions of dollars to print must be full of important information, a worthwhile way for Congress to spend your money. You'd think that, but you may change your mind after you see John's report. The floor of Congress. What happens here can affect our health, our wallets, our freedom. 
so you'd think it would be important to have an accurate record of what's said here. Sure enough, late at night after the members of Congress have gone home, down the street in the government printing office, the lights are still on. Here, while the rest of Washington sleeps, they're making history, or rather printing history, printing the official record of what was said in Congress that day. The printing office stays open all night so they can be sure the historic congressional record will be on every congressperson's desk by 7 the next morning. But have you ever read this thing? If you did, you might find it hard to believe that this is the official record. Was all this really said on the floor of Congress? What's Kelly Minahan doing in here? Uh, how could you do this to me? Go to hell! Minahan's a soap opera actress. The congressional record says a congressman rose before his colleagues to call her a talented and intelligent woman. The record also says a congressman rose to pay tribute to rock singer Ted Nugent for being as good with a bow and arrow as he is with a guitar. And on it goes. The record includes congressional praise for this grade school band that plays using instruments made from garbage. And there's a tribute to Turkey Lovers Month. This is Roy, uh, probably the only turkey in the world that enjoys being dressed. The official record includes tributes to the bird watchers of Camp Chiricahua, to beekeepers and their bees, to this 78-year-old drum majorette. claims the congressman said, Mr. Speaker, I ask my colleagues to join me in saluting Dot Hill, who's a legend not only in her own hometown, but throughout the world. Of course, none of those tributes was ever made on the floor of Congress. But they're all in here, enshrined in history along with what really was said. How does this happen? Well, what congressional insiders know that you may not is that the official record is kind of a fake. The law just says it has to be substantially a verbatim report. Congressmen have taken that word substantially and run with it. Why do they add these things? Well, suppose I'm Congressman Stossel, eager to be re-elected. I want to impress my constituents. What's more impressive than public praise in the official record of Congress? Of course, it would be embarrassing to actually stand in front of my colleagues and talk about Turkey Lovers Month. No one has time for that. So I'll just use the record to make it seem as if I did. I can even use phrases like, Mr. Speaker, I rise today, to make it extra convincing that I really did say those things in front of my colleagues. Now, the additions do cost taxpayers several million dollars, but they don't cost me anything. And how happy my constituents will be if they read it. Balladeer Dolan Ellis was happy when Senator John McCain thanked him for his years of service to Arizona. <laughs> Well, it feels good. It feels real good. <laughs> Derek Vaught feels good because he thinks former Mississippi Congressman Mike Espy really did rise on the floor to give a tribute to his karate skills. Well, I, I thought it was pretty awesome. Money is his father knows things. it never happened, but he's absurd, happy but, too. Uh, if they're going to waste money, I just don't waste it on my son and anybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> Glad he's happy. But I mind, and so do some congressmen, like Colin Peterson of Minnesota. It's as if Congress can't stop wasting money on anything. <laughs> if I ran my business the way they run this uh, Congress, uh, you know, I wouldn't have stayed in business a month. At $469 per page, the extra printing is pretty wasteful, given that... Nobody even reads this thing. No, I never read it. I, I would say that there are no members that read it. If everybody in America was forced to read the congressional record for a month, we'd be rid of these things because they say, this is ridiculous. Not only do members of Congress tell the government printers to add their extensions to the record, they also have them change the record if they don't like what they really did say. Recently, Representative Gerald Solomon got mad and started screaming at Representative Louise Slaughter. You say you're trying to shut me off? I am reserving the right to You better not do that, Wham. Who do you think you are? Afterwards, Solomon told the congressional record, print that I said, I will say to the gentle lady for whom I have the greatest respect, and that is how history will record what happened that day. I thought a record was a record. It's not. Uh, in this town, a lot of things are not what they seem or what they say they are. Peterson is sponsoring a bill that would require the record to actually be an accurate record. We can't clean up our own act. How in the world are we going to take on these tough issues? 
Recently, 2020 examined several thousand pages of the record and concluded that the person who's abused the record most is Florida Congresswoman Ileana Rose Leighton. She's put in tributes to a local restaurant, to Girl Scout cookies, to this car dealer. We will not be undersold on any car by anybody at any time. It was Ms. Ross Leighton who added the extensive tribute to the children who play garbage. Yet even the kids know that this doesn't make sense. I never performed for Congress, so why should I be on congressional record? Ms. Ross Leighton refused to talk to us about any of this. So instead, we talked to the congressman who seemed to be the second biggest abuser of the record, Jim Traffikant of Ohio. Traffikant's filled the record with tributes to a soapbox derby, to the anniversary of his grade school, to his friend, the antique car collector, and the local tennis pro, to this man for making the finals of the American Gladiators. He wrote in tributes to the local football team and the basketball team. Here, his staff messed up. They had us pay for the same entry twice. Trafficant honored local auctioneers. Why not? It's only $469 per page. $469, anybody get $469? I think that's a good bargain. $469 and a million dollars? Shoot, the beekeepers get $8 million. I heard tobacco got $20 million. Only a million dollars to record all these fine things in the congressional record. A very short amount of time, $1 million. A good deal. Sold! You said you loved me. And it was Trafficant who honored his best friend's daughter when she got a job on As the World Turns. Why should we have to pay for Jim Trafficant's tributes? John, what are you doing here in the Capitol? I mean, what the hell are you doing with me? Roll that tape. Talking to Trafficant is quite an adventure. Here. What are you doing here? I'm here. Because... Jacking me around with these other politicians who are so dumb, they can throw themselves at the ground and miss, who blow hundreds of thousands of dollars on free mail, which I don't abuse, and you're here talking to me about giving some tributes for achievements made. I think you're wasting money. These tributes are wasting I my, didn't ask my you money. That. I asked who sent you here and who told you that my tributes are wasting money. I sent because me here. Because there are a liar. I do cite some specific achievement in congressional record. I don't apologize for it, and I'm glad to be able to cite their achievements. I could stand Trafficant up. says, why pick on me? Given that, as you heard him say, his colleagues waste more money abusing those mailing privileges. Some spend $200,000 trying to impress constituents, mailing out silly newsletters. He gave us a list of what House members spend on free postage. And who should be near the top? Colin Peterson, the man who wants to cut the waste in the congressional record. So we went back to Peterson to confront him about the list. It points out how much you spend on free postage. You spend $150,000 on that. Isn't that a waste of money? When is this now? Peterson said he couldn't be near the top of the list. You know, I'm not anywhere near the top. Uh, 152,000 is close to the top. It is? Well, then yeah. this is not this year's. This but, is last year's. So in other years, well, you were happened? wasting money, and now you've That's stopped. Right. That's right. What they should do, these pussies, is sponsor a bill to stop it. Jim Trafficking is going to cite the achievements of his constituents as long as other members can. So it's okay for you to waste some money since your colleagues are wasting much more. No, I'm not saying it's wasting money. You see it as a waste of money. But why should I have to pay for that? Because that is a practice that is existing here in the Congress. And everybody pays tribute. Well, at least he's out front. I think you're terrific. I mean, you get in there and you do it, but I don't think it's going to make any difference. And I hear we're in it. We did a computer search. You and I alone, I'm afraid, have wasted several thousand dollars of the taxpayers' money. There's a speech you gave that one senator reprinted. Oh, and I have my several Emmy speech pages of that I made, uh, Senator. What, what's the funny is your, your was, Emmy speech. Was sort of nice of it. <laughs> but it was seen on television uh, by 40 million people. They reprint it so someone will see it. Nobody sees this. And you? What are you in for? <laughs> The outtakes of interviews I've done, three pages with Senator Byrd. <laughs> well, it's not, our, it. it's not our fault, and you're right, I guess it's nice, but gee, guys, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Are you tired of that dog food already? Here's something different, sweetie. 
constantly switching your dog's food can sometimes lead to finicky eating behavior. So feed your dog a consistent diet of one nutritious dog food. Purina Dog Chow every day. Since 1980, over half a million Americans who make clothing and home fashions. Since 1980, over half a million Americans who make clothing and home fashions have lost their jobs. So if you think looking for the Made in the USA label doesn't matter, next, it matters. Hi, Eddie. What do you need? Tums. Eddie doesn't speak well for the cuisine. It's not the cuisine. It's the calcium. Sure. How about these? They use aluminum and magnesium. This uses an aluminum salt. I told you. They want the calcium. But they're all acid. They want the Tums. They all help to fix the heartburn. But Tums has calcium. Something your body needs anyway. All right. I'll go get the Tums. Tums calcium rich Tums. Tums, Tums, Tums. Got to be the cuisine. Now be honest. Have you ever had a cat box order problem? <laughs> no. Never. What? Uh, you need Fresh Step Cat Litter, ma'am. It releases fresheners every time your cat steps. Only Fresh Step freshens with every step. What do you do after you introduce the first compact flare side on the planet? You make an even bigger splash. Announcing the Ford Ranger Splash Super Cab. Now the cool original also comes in a more spacious rendition. The 1994 Ford Ranger Splash and Splash Super Cab. Now how big a splash you make is up to you. Sunday, Allison Wilcox beat the odds when she triumphed over cancer. It's a miracle. And again, when she became pregnant. I thought that wasn't possible. So did I. But now she's going to need another miracle. I take no risk. Now there's a hurricane headed straight for us. We gotta find her. She's five months pregnant. Based on a true story. Well, it could be anywhere within a several thousand square mile area. I want to live. John Schneider and Mel Harris in Desperate Journey, the Allison Wilcox story Sunday. I'm your new best friend. A cop is caught between the mob and the law. You're trying to get clean by doing something dirty. And Kelly can't let go. You're my lover, and I don't want to get you involved. What if that's unacceptable to me? NYPD Blue, Tuesday, viewer discretion advised. Now for a story you really could call heartwarming. A few weeks ago, Dr. Timothy Johnson presented a life-saving report and a test on heart attacks, how to recognize the symptoms and what to do if you had them. Well, that report really was a lifesaver for one of our viewers. Dr. Tim joins us now from our Boston Bureau with the amazing details. Well, Hugh, we all get a lot of mail thanking us for what we do, but this one was really unusual. <clears throat> it came, comes from a Francis Izzy, uh, who says that that night she and her husband were watching 2020, and this is what she writes. That day, my husband had been experiencing chest discomfort and heartburn while at work. Friends offered to take him to the hospital, but he declined, suggesting it was the tuna fish sandwich he had eaten for lunch. The discomfort continued into the evening, accelerating into pain in his chest. While your feature story described the symptoms of heart attacks, we realized we were in trouble. The hospital is a few blocks away, so we went to the emergency room, Shortly after arrival, John went into cardiac arrest and was coded. We were told by the doctors if we had not been there, my husband would have died. We want to thank you for producing such informative shows, this one in particular. <laughs> Boy, that is dramatic. How, uh, how is he doing now? Well, I talked to John, Izzy, this afternoon. He's doing well. He's getting better day by day. And he once again said, thank you all very much for saving my life. It, it really, as you said, is heartwarming. That is amazing. It's gratifying to be involved in a program that is life-saving. <laughs> We'll be right back. What do you want for breakfast? Can you have something different? Kellogg's just right. Sounds good. Honey, what do you want for breakfast? Something different. Kellogg's just right. Sounds good. Honey, what do you want for breakfast? Something different. Kellogg's just right. Sounds good. Kellogg's Just Right is just what you want. An exciting blend of sensational tastes and textures, so you always get something different. What do you want for breakfast? Kellogg's Just Right. Sounds good. Kellogg's just right. You just never get tired of it. It's morning in Detroit, and four designers are working on a concept car. In Brazil, a class of engineers studies a new engine. In England, a Ford-powered car drives to victory. In Australia, a Ford returns from an endurance run. 
And back in America, the Lincoln Mark 8 gains yet another admirer. This is Ford, a world of 325,000 people in 30 countries where the pursuit of quality never stops. All families have disagreements from time to time, but some families argue again and again and never reach a solution. If this sounds like your family, call the Boys Town National Hotline at 1-800-448-3000. The hotline has trained counselors who are available day or night to children and parents, and the call is free of charge. Saturday on ABC's College Football. It's one of the greatest rivalries in sports as Army battles Navy in a high noon showdown. Then the Southeastern Conference crown is on the line. The Florida Gators beat the Alabama Crimson Tide in a rematch of last year's thriller. It's the SEC Championship game presented by Dr. Pepper, all Saturday on ABC Sports. Monday night is day one, and host for Sawyer has a preview of the upcoming program. Barbara, on Monday, a day one investigation. He's a prominent physician who says he is doing God's work. Some of his patients and even other physicians say he's guilty of medical misconduct but he calls the charges religious persecution. That's Monday on day one. Hugh? Thank you, Forrest. Also, don't forget to watch Nightline after your local news with a report on an intriguing conversation with Supreme Court Justice Harry Blackman. And Barbara, you have something really special coming up next week. Yes, I do. Wednesday night, December 8th, I'll be presenting the 12 most fascinating people of 1993. Among our choices, Clint Eastwood, singer K.D. Lang, basketball great Shaquille O'Neal, Dr. Jack Kevorkian, David Letterman, and eight others. Just as fascinating. Where am I in that list of 12? Uh, 13. I was afraid <laughs> just, of that. Just turned out that way. Anyway, we think you'll find the program intriguing and entertaining Wednesday night, 10 Eastern, 9 Central Time. And that is 2020 for tonight. We thank you for joining us. Remember, we're in touch, so you'll be in touch. I'm Barbara Walters. And I'm Hugh Dow. And for all of us here at 2020, I'll see you next Wednesday. Have a good weekend. Good night. Twenty Twenty is a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. The American Broadcasting Company, ABC. Coming up next on Northwest Nightcast, a lot of wind, rain, and snow is headed our way to the east side, and uh, pilots are defending a commuter plane used throughout the Northwest. A parade tonight in Sunnyside, and the Prosser Mustangs galloping towards the King Bowl. Stay up. The news is next. 8 a.m. tomorrow. It's a crackerjack of a sale at Le Mans. Almost everything is 15 to 50 percent off, and everyone's a winner. See Friday's newspaper for details. Don't miss it. United Buy and Sell Furniture Warehouse saves you money. Quality furniture and mattresses at low warehouse prices. Quality furniture for every room in your home at savings up.